Hey guys, what's up? Joey Boy here and we're back. So, welcome back to my vlog. Uh, in this video, I will be doing an unboxing of the Keychron K8 TKL Mechanical Keyboard. For those of you who don't know what a mechanical keyboard is, a mechanical keyboard is basically a keyboard, but it doesn't use uh, membrane switches. It uses mechanical switches. Now, what are mechanical switches? Mechanical switches sound and feel different depending on the type of mechanical switch that it actually is. So, uh, blues are clicky, uh, browns are tactile, reds are linear. Now, uh, shout out to uh, Goeld Gaming for sponsoring this vid and lending me uh, the Keychron K8 for review. So, let's get to it. So, Keychron is a foreign company. Uh, the, the keyboard is made in China. What's so special about this keyboard? Uh, what's special about this keyboard is that you can use it both wireless and wired. It's compatible with Mac and PC. It, you can use it wirelessly or wired. You can uh, pair it up to three devices at the same time and you can switch quickly between those devices if they are paired. So if you're using an iPad and a Mac or an, and, an, and your phone actually, you can switch it up with just the command on the keyboard. This version of the Keychron K8 is RGB backlit. So for those rainbow puke lovers out there, I think this keyboard is for you. So out of the box, and that's taking a long time. Oh, okay. So it's wireless and it has a 4,000 milliamp battery. According to their website, the battery life lasts for about two months or 240 hours or a month sorry 240 hours when the backlighting is off so when you open it we get this it's their manual and it actually shows you how to operate it and what are the functions of it pretty basic before we get to the keyboard we check out what other things are in here oh they provide a keycap puller and a switch puller that's a nice feature to have. This keyboard retails on their website for around $70 to $100, depending on what configuration you get. This configuration, I think, is around $90 because this configuration has Gateron uh, Browns and you can choose and it's hot swappable. So these are Gateron Browns and it's hot swappable. That's why it's more expensive. The base model of this is not hot swappable and uses non Gateron and non Keychron. Keychron makes their own switches, which is the Keychron optical ones, which are supposedly faster. I have yet to test that. And I don't think I can test it because I don't have the proper equipment to do so. Anyway, so pretty standard. Uh, we have our cable, our USB C. Oh my gosh, thank you for the USB-C uh, manufacturers out there who ship out their keyboards with the USB-C uh, power, in power and data input. USB-C is great, you guys. It gives great power delivery and it also gives great data delivery. So again, we have the keycap and switch puller because this is a hot swappable keyboard. And then we have card. Please be... Oh, so this is a reminder if you're gonna have hot swap your switches. Anyway. So... Oh, and uh, before I forget, be because I mentioned before that the keyboard is compatible with both Windows and Mac, you can actually switch your keycaps from the Windows configuration to the Mac configuration and vice versa. And here are the extras. So let's go to the actual keyboard, you guys. Oh, sorry. And we have a manual that's inside. I think that the manual also teaches you, I bet most of you are not gonna read this. Um, it's gonna teach you how to hot swap the keycaps and the 
switches inside. So this is the keyboard. Oh wow. That's really nice packaging. Oh, I forgot to mention the packaging inside the box is really good because the foam is insulated all around. Don't see that much actually. So wow. First impressions. You guys hear that? That's the sound of a mechanical keyboard. Oh wow. It's sturdy AF. This thing has no deck flex at all. See? No almost no flex at all. This actually has an aluminum construction, which is it it makes it quite heavy actually. Let me check the side real quick how how much this weighs. It's actually a little less than a kilogram. And it doesn't feel that heavy for a board. But yet then again it's a 10 keyless keyboard. What is a 10 keyless keyboard? Well it's basically a keyboard without a numpad. That's it. A keyboard without a numpad and you retain your command keys and your function keys. And with this keyboard actually you get multimedia keys as well. See? First impressions of this keyboard are really nice. Um I haven't experienced actually browns. I haven't actually. Oh, what? The the space bar stabilization is nice. See, these are the things that you look for in a mechanical keyboard: the sound and the feel of the switch. Now, the switch is very new to me. Because I've only, for reference, I have this keyboard. This is a Logitech G G12, and it ha uh, this one uses uh, tactile switches from Logitech. Uh, G tactile switches from Logitech. The Keychron ones are softer. The travel is softer. I wouldn't say mushier. And these are supposed to be tactile since they're brown. The travel is lighter. As opposed to... They sound nice. Both of them sound nice. So, anyway. But, the my old Logitech keyboard is a mechanical keyboard. It's also aluminum, by the way. This thing is heavy. It's a, it's, it's a unit of a keyboard, to be honest. And... My old keyboard is also actually made out of aluminum. And this one, the build quality of it, really top notch. It feels very sturdy. It doesn't have drain holes though, so don't spill anything on this keyboard because if you spill anything on it, it's going straight down to the PCB. It doesn't have any drain holes. Here are the ports. So you can see it's USB-C, it's Bluetooth, and Let's do a sound test. So, again. Let's check this one out. If you can see that. It has two height adjustments. Pretty cool. So, my initial impressions of this keyboard are really nice. So, for reference, you guys, this is my daily driver right now. This is a Ducky 12SF. It's actually it's a 71 key keyboard. Basically, this is a 65, 70% keyboard. This is a 10 keyless. Now, uh, I didn't go for a 60% keyboard because I still wanted my arrow keys. I didn't go for a 10 keyless because. For me, it didn't look as cool as the 65% or the 60% but I didn't want to go 60% because um, I just thought that I still wanted some functions and I still wanted my arrow keys. So that's why. Comparing the two, the, my Docky 1 2SF isn't wireless. I, I can only use it wired. 
for the gamers out there, if you need to be reminded, this is only a Bluetooth. This uh, keyboard is only Bluetooth, and that's not recommended for gaming. You need either a dongle type connection, like lo like Logitech Lightspeed or Corsairs, whatever they call it, and or the Razer one. Basta yung may dongle. If not, it's gonna lag. The lag is gonna be noticeable. Even if this is a 5.1 Bluetooth device, it's still gonna lag. Don't use this for gaming wirelessly. Sound test between the two. My Ducky One to SF uses silent reds. So, I know you can barely hear that. As opposed to this one. See, I'm already slamming my finger. Let's check out the RGB backlighting. I don't know if you can see, but it kind of has weak RGB. I don't, I don't like, I don't like the weak RGB. I mean, if you guys check out my older vids and you see my keyboard in the background, you'd see it light up. I mean, yeah, it's white and the and the backlighting I set to it, it's pink. But this, I know it's black and and it's gray. So it, and the keycaps don't reflect. They don't reflect the light, but at the same time, the backlighting for me is a bit weak. I don't know if it's just the color or because of the build quality, but if you like RGB, this keyboard might underwhelm you. I'm gonna try pairing it to my iPad. Bluetooth. Mac. So, anyways, so I couldn't pair it with my iPad. I don't know how. I don't want to read the manual, but uh, that's actually for the review. So wait for that. Wait for the initial review. This is just the unboxing. I'll explore the lighting modes. I'll use this actually. I'll use this uh, keyboard for a week, and then um, I'll come out with a review next week. So you, you guys watch out for that. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that. I, I would appreciate it if you would like the vid. Pretty much that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this vid to your friends. And I would really appreciate it if you actually subscribe. I'm trying to get monetized, people. Anyway, thank you for uh, checking out this vid. I hope you like it. I hope you appreciate it.